in Jesus name Father we thank you for your mercies we thank you for your love we thank you for your kindness Lord we are about to receive your word fresh word from your throne we ask that your word this morning we produce great seed in our life we produce great fruit in our life rather great fruit we produce as the true gospel is being preached lord that our life will continue to be transformed from glory to glory in the name of jesus thank you for those who are following our teachings on the youtube on the facebook Lord, we ask that the same effect and impact be produced in their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that this word will spread and to bear fruit in all the world in the name of Jesus. Thank you for those who are supporting this ministry. I'm asking you, Lord, that your blessings shall come to rest upon them. Those who are supporting, partnering with us, you will continue to bless them, provide for them, and continue to help them to remain rapturable. And that the transformation also shall continue in their own lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please sit down quietly. We are so grateful unto the Lord Most High. The Lord who graciously, you know, grant us a door of utterance. A door of utterance in uh, Ekiti State, where in one of the local government, Ijero Ekiti, and it was a glorious entrance. And the word of God did prevail there. There was utterance, the door of the word was open. And after the program, three days program, they requested that uh, it should become a yearly visitation, apostolic visitation. Amen. And we trust God for what God has begun doing in Nigeria Kitty and all those axes. Not just Nigeria, that it will spread to all Ekiti. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I have a, a concern over what is happening in parts of Nigeria. We are in July. At the beginning of the year, there was rain, one heavy rain fell in February. And people rush to go and farm, and after farming, the rain break from that February throughout March, and then uh, even partly April, and most of the corn farm and many of the farm were destroyed, and people began farming again. And then in July, June, rain fell a little bit. Then in July, we had heavy downpour at the beginning of the first week of July. Then rain break again. In many parts of the country, rain is not falling for the past three weeks of July. And they were in Ikiti, and they were telling us that their yam farms are not going to produce well because normally the July rain is what used to make yam farm yam to produce very well. People who planted corn in June and then early July, the corns are already, and some other things they are planted, they are already having issues. I was doing a video on this, I'll talk more about that. So we need to intercede for our nation. Because hunger is tearing us at the face. We are in the rainy season. Things are being corn and other things are being harvested. Yet, the price of food items are escalating. The Lord will help us. I'll do a video later today. I'll post on the YouTube channel about this, doing detailing it and what should be done. Amen. Amen. And then we're also praying that the plant protests let Jehovah use for his glory. Whatever God wants to use to redeem Nigeria from Atalaya government, let him go ahead and do it. The suffering is becoming too alarming, it's becoming too much. So let God do whatever He wants to do through any means. God can use any means. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord's will be done in that protest. May the government not hijack it. May evil people not hijack it. Let it bring glory to the Lord Almighty. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know the organizers, but I know that hunger is part of what is organizing that protest. Hunger is part of the organizer of that protest. They were saying that P2B, P2B has no hand in it. People are hungry. People, the money, our money has no value. A missionary told me he was traveling down to neighboring country here, Kutonu here, and he went to the border to change that Nigeria money. 20,000, the other exchange, he said it was either 7,000 sephas or 8,000 sephas. 
I remember those days when we travel to the border, we go to Kuton, uh, you change uh, 1,000 uh, 1, naira, you are, they will give you 20,000 servers. And look at what has become of our nation. The Lord will definitely visit this nation. That I know for sure. And that is why I encourage you to read our books of how, how is how is the change going to come? God has given us revelation. I have documented it. Our book, Seven Steps to, to uh, the Seven Prayer Steps to Bat the New Nigeria, the pathway to 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 to, to bat the New Nigeria. Amen. The coming prophetic collapse of Islam. Very important. That book, very important. Amen. The part one of uh, the roadmap to collapse the caliphate and restore a nation. The part one and then the part two, which is 16 steps to collapse the caliphate and restore our nations. We have written so many books. You need to read that book also. Understand the ongoing bloodshed in Nigeria. It will give you a view of what we are having, what is happening. We have written a lot of things under God's you know, guidance about how Nigeria can be redeemed. So go to our, they are there on our on a, on Amazon bookstore. Some of these books I'm telling you, on Amazon bookstore by Moses Ojeje, the God special. You can get them. They will tremendously bless your life. And if you don't, if you don't have them, you can order them by contact. Our number is on the screen. You can chat us on WhatsApp or call the number. Then you pay for those books. Account detail is on the screen. You pay. We'll tell you the what you want. You tell us how many of our books you have. We we'll have a lot of books. Books, the one or uh, hard copies. We we'll have no less than. 20 to 30 books already. The ones that are still available, some are finished. We don't have them. I will trust God to reprint. So when you call, we we'll send you a list of the vocabulary. You can make order. Amen. So we are going to wind up the teaching we began last week today. Amen. Last week we began looking at, uh, you know, something very, very interesting. Something very, very important. And we said seven things that you need Amen. That a Christian or that that qualifies a Christian for rapture. Seven things that qualifies a Christian. There are seven things that qualifies a Christian or that qualifies. Okay, or that qualify. Sorry, I think that English should be corrected. Seven things that qualify a Christian, not qualifies. Because that is plural. We are miss, we miss up. Seven things that qualify a Christian for the rapture. We looked at uh, four of them. Can somebody remind me? Number one, what was the first thing we looked at? Love. 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 Abounding love. Not just love. A growing love. Love for God must be growing. Your love for practical Christian love must be growing. Your love for your fellow human being, your neighbor, must be growing. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love, love the Lord your God and then love your neighbor as yourself. With all your heart, your love for God must be with all your heart. And, the Bible, and we are made to understand that that love must be a growing love if you are going to qualify for rapture. Your love for God, your love for your fellow human being must be growing if you are going to make the rapture. We have seen that. If you have missed that message, please refer to the Global Assembly YouTube channel. It's there on the YouTube channel and on the Facebook. You can also watch it on Global Assembly uh, Facebook. Amen. There was the second thing we talked about. You need knowledge. Ignorant men who said they will not make the rapture. Amen. Fools will not make the rapture. Remember the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew chapter 25? It says five were foolish, amen, and then five were wise. So the fools will not make the rapture. The ignorant, the Bible says, my book perish for what? For lack of knowledge. If you are if you are ignorant, you will not make the rapture. And the devil wants to make you to remain ignorant. Amen. So that you can miss the rapture. And I started the teaching yesterday tied to the, the seven, uh, seven pillars of wisdom. And we said it how to get wisdom. You need to be wise. Amen. Foolish Christians will not make the word, the rapture. And that is what we saw in the parable of the ten virgins. Amen. It's only wise Christians that will make the word. The word that will make the, the rapture. And one of the pillars of, 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 of wisdom is knowledge. Understanding is there. Amen. Fear of God is there. And the fear of God saying inside there is a, a, a foolish man saying inside there is no There is no God. If you are foolish, you say there is no God. You will not live correctly. You will not live a, a correct life. A life of fear of God if you are foolish. Amen. So we need to be among which category do we need to be? The five wise virgin. And without knowledge, there can be no wisdom. 
I have explained that last week. And please refer to that teaching. Amen. I'm trusting God that God will help us with grace, with finances, so that some of these teachings that are blessing lives everywhere, I can put them into, into books. There are books where we can put them together and print them out as books so that people can have the copy. Amen. It's fun. People don't know that ministry is a lot of money. That is why we're asking for ministry support, for mission support, so that we can print books. Before now, we had, before 2018, we had 70 books. I think only about 30 of them in print. Then from that time till now, if we are to put the books I've written together now, you know, they should be not less than 20 or so currently. None of them has been printed. Amen. And funds are needed for ministry work. And that is why the Bible says, through prosperity, my city shall spread abroad. And we pray that God will bring in friends and partners and minister and destiny helpers, those who commit themselves to this ministry, those who say every month, I put one million naira on ground for this ministry. Every every month I put hundred thousand naira, ten thousand naira, amen. So that this work can proceed. Our work is a unique work. We are a teaching priest, and what is lacking today is foolishness abound everywhere because of what lack of what lack of knowledge. When you look at the seven pillars of uh, of of wisdom, the third pillar we say is what is instructions and teachings. That is what brings wisdom, sustain wisdom, and increase wisdom, builds wisdom. And we, we have been given the ministry of, of instructions and what? Ministry of instructions and what? And what? And teachings. Prophecy does not grow ministry, does not grow a people, does not bring wisdom. Amen. Prophecy does not bring what? It doesn't bring wisdom. Hallelujah. So I'm trusting the Lord that God will help us to intensify teaching. Don't just hear once. Once you hear our messages, Go back to the, that is why he's on YouTube channel. Go back and listen again, over and over. Even me that preach, used to sit and listen to my messages over and over. Take time to listen to it over and over. Play it. As you are walking, play, play it. Hear these things, these truths. I'm not, re I'm not reading people's book to preach. I study and receive revelation to preach. What I'm teaching you, there are no things I read from any book. Do you know what happened? When I, 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 I was studying, I was reading Proverbs and Proverbs chapter 9, and I saw seven pillars of wisdom. I have not thought, I have not researched about it before. So I, I read through it. And I said, okay, let me watch, let me list, let me search for what people have thought about pillars of wisdom. And I listened to what the people are teaching. It was off course. It was not what was in the Bible there. One, one left Proverbs chapter 9 and went to James chapter 3. I was teaching on another thing. And I said, no, this is not what this Bible verse is saying. And I went, Bible chapter, I went back to Proverbs chapter 9. I began to study and meditate. And God began to give me revelation about the word, about the seven pillars of wisdom. What I teach is not what I read from book. It is what I study and receive revelation on. And that is why our ministry is unique. Because we are called as teaching priests. And the Bible says, it says, it shall come in the latter days that the, the mountain where the lost temple stand shall be heard every man. And they, say, they shall say, come let us go to the house of God. For he shall do what? He shall teach us of his and we shall walk in his path. The destiny of the church in this end time lies in what? In teaching of the world. Hallelujah. And that ministry is what God has committed to us and to some others. It's not to everybody. There are seven key, you know, ministry that God, you know, gave that Jesus told us about as revealed to Apostle Paul. And one of those key ministries that is lacking today is the ministry of teaching. Teachers are despised. Teachers are not honored. So people run after prophecy, run after apostolic and prophetic and pastoral ministry. Amen. And they neglect an evangelical ministry and they neglect the teaching ministry, which is actually the one that established between the faith. Amen. Amen. So we looked at the, the third thing we looked at was what? We looked at what? What was the third thing? Revelation. 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 Amen. The third thing you need not to miss the rapture is what? It's revelation or deep inside. You need revelation. Paul succeeded because of revelation. So the thing I teach you, he says, it's not what anybody, Galatians chapter 1, he said, I didn't receive it from men. He said, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. And that was why Paul lived a different life. He didn't see Jesus face to face. I mean, he didn't, he didn't walk with him one on one. 
you know, you know, but he didn't work with Jesus Christ one and one because he hated. He was, he was, he was you know, he was a uh, part of the 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 the, the, the Sadducees. I mean, no, a Pharisee. Sorry, a Pharisee. A Pharisee. He was a Pharisee. They were antichrist. They were part of the people that even say crucify, crucify him. And after that, after Jesus Christ was crucified, he went after the church. Jesus encountered him. And by revelation, he began to preach, he began to teach. Revelation is what will make you to succeed in this time. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then verse number four, we say it's what? Discernment. I, be, I, say, I will say discernment, help you to escape what? Falsehood. Escape it to every escape word. Deception. False teachers. Balaam's and Jezebel's. Then let's go to do the business of today. We have taken much time. Revising what we went through is okay. So if one detail, go to the YouTube channel for those ones. Now, we are looking at point number five today. Let's go back to our text. Our text is uh, Philippians chapter 1 from verse uh, 9 to verse 11. Somebody come and read for me. Philippians chapter 1, chapter 1 verse 9 to 11. Fast read that in. Philippians 1, 9 to 11. Who is coming to read for me? Let me come. Let the person come first. <laughs> Who is coming now to read Philippians 1 for me? Hurry and come out. Do like the of Christ. Nobody is above the world. When I say you should come and read, you jump up and come and read like the of Christ. Don't do as if you are, you are, you are bigger than Jesus. Oh, yeah, read loudly. And this is my prayer, mm -hmm. that your love may abound more and more in knowledge mm -hmm. and depth of insight, mm -hmm. so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless. Mm -hmm. You may be what? Pure and blameless. You may be pure and what? And blameless. And then what again? Until the day of Christ. You may be pure and blameless. Uh -huh. Filled with the fruit of righteousness. Filled with what? With the fruit of righteousness. That now, the pure and blameless. Now, what Paul? what is Paul saying here? That you may be pure and blameless until which day? The day of Christ. And we said last teaching, the, the first part, one of the teaching that the day of Christ is which day? It is the day of the rapture of the church. So your love needs to grow. You need to continue to what? You need to grow in knowledge. You need, to be, you need to be deep in revelation. You need to receive revelation. You need revelation to be able to, 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 to continue to the day of Christ in your Christian way. You need revelation. Amen. And you need discernment so that you can know what is the best thing to do, best decision, what to do at every point. You know it because you receive revelation. You now have discernment also. You are good to go. I said that you may what? That you may live what? What kind of life? You may do what? You may do what? That I may live. Mm -hmm. That I may be able to decide what is best. Mm -hmm. I may be pure and blameless. You may be pure. Number five is purity. What is the fifth? The fifth thing needed to qualify for rapture is what is purity. Because what is what 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 is what what is in context here is what is to be able to what to to what to be able to see Christ at his day. Abi. Pure and what? Read that place again. Pure and what? And blameless. And so that what happened? Until the day of Christ. Until the day of Christ. The day of Christ is what is what what, what is the bone of contention here? And what is the day of Christ? The rapture of the church. And we said last week that there's a distinction between the what? The day of the Lord and what? And the day of Christ. The day of Christ is the rapture. The day of God is what? Is the is punishment, is judgment. It begins after the word, after the rapture, when the lawless man is revealed. The day of the Lord, the day of the Lord begins. But the day of Christ is what? Is the day he comes in the cloud of glory to come and receive his sentence so that they can go to the, the mansions he has built for them in heaven. John chapter 14. Go to pray a place for you. On the day of Christ, he comes to take his bride to where? To those mansions to prepare them for what? For the wedding of the Lamb. To pray for the wedding. The groom come for what? He comes for the, what? the five wise virgins. They will go with him to go and be with him. Amen. That is the day of Christ. Then the day of the Lord begins with what? It begins with the day. After the, after the day of Christ have taken place, 
The day of Christ is is, typif- is clearly to a written, documented in first the Onega chapter 4, from verse 13 to verse 18. The day of Christ is documented there. Correctly, completely documented there. The day of Christ is what? It's a day that the church, the bread of Christ, will escape all these things that come to pass. Bible says, and to wait for his son. First Onega chapter 1, verse, verse 9. Who delivered us from 9 and 10? From the road to come. The day of Christ, the day that Christ come to world to deliver his bride from what? From the road to come. Then after that day of Christ, then the lawless one did, is revealed. And that is why it is not, first, it's going to Onega chapter 2 from verse, uh, uh, I think from verse 3. He says, for that day will not come. For the day of the Lord will not come. Amen. Until the lawless one is revealed. Until the man of iniquity is revealed. The day of the Lord will not come. They will say the day of the Lord is what? Is a period of time. It's a time period through which there's going to be tribulation. Revelation chapter 6 from to, 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 to verse 18 is that day. Hallelujah. Is that day. And the day of, of the Lord is going, to, is going to accumulate into what is called the Armageddon. It's going to accumulate what is called the, what? the Armageddon, which is the final battle. Revelation 29 tells us what happened after Armageddon. At the long run, the devil will be, will be arrested and be chained in hell for a thousand years. And the kingdom age shall be established and shall continue for a thousand years. Hallelujah. So how do I escape the wrath to come? Matthew, Luke chapter 21, verse uh, from verse uh, uh, 36, 35, 36, so that you can be able to escape all these things. What is those things? The terror, the wrath to come. Jesus come to deliver us from the wrath to come. First, on Eka chapter 1, chapter 1 from verse 1, verse, verse, verse 10. He delivers us from the wrath to come at the day of, and in, in, on his day. Then after the day of Christ has, take, has come to pass, what happened? The next thing is what? The day of the Lord begins. The day of the Lord is the day of judgment. When he comes with thousands of thousands of his head, Jude chapter 14 and 15. On the day of the Lord, what happened? The Lord comes to judge during the day of the Lord. He comes to judge. But Christ comes to rapture his church in his day. But he comes to what? He comes to judge when he's coming to what? To come and what? To come and reign. He will judge and then, and then, and then, and then he will fight and arrest, punish with lawless, lawless and wickedness and punish the devil. Then he will establish a kingdom. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. And we have said the fifth thing that you need to qualify for the day of Christ is what? What is the fifth thing? Purity. What do I call it? Purity. Purity. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall what? They shall see God. If your heart is not pure, you cannot see Jesus on that day. No matter how Christian you are, you are saved by grace. Glory be to God. But that is not the end. Who saved us and what? And called us to live a life of what? A life of what? A life of holiness. Called us to live holy. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. He called us and what? And, and what? He saved us and called us to what? To live holy life. Amen. First Tonica chapter 4. Verse, verse, uh, verse, verse, verse 8, verse 7 and 8. Let's go there. He called us. Amen. He saved us and called us to live a life of what? A life of holiness. Are we there? The James chapter 1, verse 20, verse 27. Who is reading for me? First, Onega chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Fast read it. Fast read Mm hmm. First Thessalonians, somebody come out and read for me now. When I'm pronouncing scripture, you jump up and come and read. Stop wasting my time. Who is doing that for me? You come and read before you write. Don't write. Read. God, come and read for me before you write. God has called us to live holy lives, not mm. impure lives. Not what? We are not called to live which life? Impure, impure lives. Therefore, our calling is to live a what? Holy life, not impure lives. Eh? Uh-huh. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. There is a rule. There is, is there is the, the, the rule is that what? What life do you live? You live holy life, not impure lives. 
For the qualifier for that you what life do you live? You live a holy life. Ephesians chapter chapter 5, verse 27. Say, for it's coming forward, a glorious, a church without what? Without wrinkle, that is without spot, without without nyama nyama. Without spot. Without wrinkle. That they may be blameless. Two things are there. A church without any what? Any garbage. Any defilement, any abominable, any abomination. Uh -huh. James chapter 1, verse 27. Should I read it for me? James 1, 27. Mm -hmm. okay. Fast. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their, in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. And refusing to let, let the world. Let me see from King James Version. Fast read that here. Come on, please. When I'm talking, he's jumping up. Come here, come here, come here, read for me. Pure religion and undefined before God and the Father is, is this, mm -hmm. to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. And to keep himself unspotted, some version, unspotted from the world. You must not allow the world to spot you. Keep yourself pure. That is pure religion. You must keep yourself pure. But not allow yourself to be defiled, to be polluted. No. Hallelujah. Purity of hearts. That's what we're talking about here. No sacred sin. No what? No sacred sin. Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. No sacred sin. 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 3, 4 and 5. Amen. Purity has to do with what? With your personal or what? Or sacred life. Purity has to do with what? It has to do with your, your personal life. Your sacred life. Nobody sees you by your worship pornography. You're not living a pure life. Nobody sees you by your fornicating and coming out of as a married woman. Nobody. Or a married man. You are what? You are living an impure life. You are, you are hiding and drinking alcohol. Impure, impure life. You are collecting bribe and cheating and extorting people's money. Yet you come to church as a pastor, as a church member. You are not pure. Purity has to do with what? With what? With your life in the secret. When nobody is there. What life are you living? Are you living in secrecy? Amen. Some people are, are, are stealing. They say, stealing. They give the money to keep. They, they chop it. I was told about a pastor. They were trying to look for somebody to represent them. And then they, somebody called this pastor. Said, no, that one, we cannot put him there. He has, he has no financial. Yeah. Leave that one. Don't even talk about that. Leave him. The person that women, women are accusing of, 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 of immorality. No. So purity has to do with what? With your life in the world, in the secrets. A lot of us are living in secret sin. We are hiding it, but you cannot hide it from God now. Is the eyes of Job not running to and to and fro throughout the whole man to behold all the ways of men and to make himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect before him? What is the state of your heart? Nobody saw David. David has slept with a, with a, with a Bathsheba and have cleaned them out. Abby, anybody saw David? No way. He has done it and cleaned his mouth. But God saw David. Is that not true? He plotted and killed uh, even, even the husband Uriah. And as a king, now he had the right to marry when the husband was like, he married the woman. Nobody knew what David did. But God knew what David did. But the sin exposed him. What happened to him? His sins exposed him. Your sin will still expose him if you don't, if, if, if you don't run to Calvary. And if he doesn't expose you, you can't be lying. But the day of the Lord is coming. You will not partake of the day of the Lord. You will not be raptured. You will be left behind like the five foolish virgins. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. The Lord sees it all. Man may not see it, but who sees it? Jehovah sees it. You cannot hide it from God. You can hide it from man. But your sin will find you out. Either now or what? Or later. When you have missed the rapture, they will not be asking, Ah, uh -uh. woman of God, Ah, uh -uh. you are old pastor, what happened to you now? You two didn't make the rapture. Ah, uh -uh. uh, not be the daughter, not be the child of Pastor God, will be this. God forbid in Jesus' name. What happened to you? You didn't make rapture, I wonder. But your father was the preacher of rapture, of rapture, of righteousness and holiness. So why didn't you make it? It shall not be a portion in Jesus' name. So purity of life is non-negotiable. It's not what? It's non-negotiable. You must qualify for rapture. Your life must be pure. No negotiable. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's see more scriptures. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 8. First right there. Then Acts 15, 20 to 27. First Thessalonians 2, verse 10. About purity as an as a compulsory mandatory requirement for anybody to qualify for rapture. The Bible says nothing impure. Have you seen that scripture before? Revelation chapter 21, verse 27 to 31. Amen. Nothing impure shall enter into that city. Nothing impure. Who should I read in the first? You can read Revelation chapter 20. If you have seen anyone you have seen first. If it's Revelation 21, 27 you have seen. Nothing impure will ever enter into Nothing what? Impure will what? Will ever enter into what? Into the news, into the new heaven. Now will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful? They will not enter. But only those anyone that does what is what? Shameful, shameful or, or what? Or deceitful. But only those whose name are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Nothing that defiles will enter. Nothing impure. Abi? It's not clear enough. Nothing impure. If your life is not pure, you cannot partake of the rapture. Mm. You can't partake of the rapture. Uh -huh. Revelation chapter 3, I asked you to read before, 4 and 5, nobody read it. Amen. Yes, you have a few people in Sardis mm -hmm. who have not soiled their clothes. Mm -hmm. They walk with me dressed So in if white. you soil your clothes, you will not be able to what? That is, you become impure. You are not living a pure life. You are born again. You are saved by grace. But along the line, what do you do? You soil your garments. You can't make the rapture. Uh-huh. They walk with me dressed in white for their worthy. Mm -hmm. He who overcomes will like them be dressed in white. Mm -hmm. I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name before my father and his angels. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible is clear. It's not everybody that is born saved by grace that will make the rapture. No way. Not all Christians should make... Those who are lying to you in the name of eternal security that once you have reversed, they, they are deceiving you. They are, they are Satan's agent. Any pastor preaching eternal security is what? Is an agent of Lucifer. Run away from them. They are wolves in sheep clothing. They will destroy and damage your life. Run away from them. Uh -huh, what are you reading? First Thessalonians uh -huh. 10. Mm -hmm. You are witnesses, and so is God, mm -hmm. of how holy and righteous, blameless we were among you who believed. Some verses of how holyly. Paul say you are what? You are witness, and so is who? Is God? How what? Holy. How holyly righteous. and righteously we were what? Blameless. We were among you. We were blameless. We were holy. We were pure. When were we too? We never carried anybody, converted anybody's silver and gold. We never, we never, we never had any issue of any any dirty lifestyle. You were witness. Amen. First, first Samuel chapter twelve. Samuel came to before them and said, "Samuel said, he said today witness against me. If I if if I have touched anybody's wife, 
If I've taken anybody bread, eaten anybody bread in not. If I've converted anybody, tell me, say, witness against me. I am here before you. Oh, yeah, come and witness against me. How many pastors and church members can, and Christians can say that today? Praise the Lord. It's required of us that we, may work, that we should live a sanctified life, baby. That we should live what? A sanctified life. And Paul telling, speaking about that, uh, Romans chapter 12. He said, do not what? He said, do not, he said, he said, do not be conformed to this but what? Be transformed by what? The renewal of your mind. Let's go there, Romans chapter 12 from verse, from verse uh, 1 to 3. I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, uh -huh. to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. holy and pleasing to God. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Mm. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of, of this world, world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will really is. Mm -hmm. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amen. Amen. Our salvation shall be holistic. Which one do you want to read again? No, I don't want to read Acts 20. Acts 20, when the believers in, in, at, the, at the Council of Jerusalem in six states, they say, let's not let's talk about the issue of exorcism and circumcision. Let's tell them to keep their self pure. Acts, 20, Acts 15 from verse 20. Let's tell them to keep their self pure from idol. Pure. Purity was, is, the, is the issue. Acts chapter 15 from verse 20. It was said to them, let them not, let them not defy themselves with, 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 with things sacrificed to idols. And what? And with sexual immorality. And with blood of strangling. Because to the early church, purity was what? Was a major issue, just like it is to God, to Jesus. If you're going to qualify for rapture, purity must become what? Must become very key and very dear to you. You must, you must maintain chastity of life. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. No, chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, sorry. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2. You see, we were espoused to one husband. They will present you as a just virgin. Just virgin. That is undefiled, without impurity, unpolluted. Very, very important, very, very key. Hallelujah. It's very, very what? Very, very key. Very, very what? Very, very important. They didn't joke with purity. The early church didn't that purity was 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 composed during the early church. Let the Gentiles, what you tell them is let's tell them about purity. This is the main thing. The main thing is not circumcision, not body circumcision. The main thing is what is purity. They need to be pure. Hallelujah. We didn't read first Thessalonica chapter 4. From verse 3 to verse 8. Let's read that one before we go to the sixth thing quickly. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah, who is reading for me? First Tenaka chapter 4, verse 3 to 8. First read that there. God's will is for you to be holy. Mm -hmm. So stay away from all sexual sin. Stay away from what? All sexual sin. sin. Mm -hmm. Then each of you will control his own body. Mm -hmm. And live in holiness and honor. Control his body and live how? In holiness, holiness and, and honor. honor. Not in lustful passion like the pagans who mm. do not know God and his ways. Mm -hmm. Never harm much the Christian brother in his matter by violating his wife. Mm -hmm. For the Lord avenges all such sins, mm -hmm. as we have solemnly warned you before. God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. Mm -hmm. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Amen. Yeah, Paul has nailed it all. Amen. And I pray that we will embrace holiness Amen. and keep ourselves pure. Purity shall become very dear to us. We will maintain purity. Paul also, Peter also told us in 2 Peter chapter 3, you see what manner of life you, you, you ought to live in all purity. Let's go there. So, chapter, chapter 3, I think from verse, uh, either verse 13 or so. 
12, 12, 13, you see it here. First three are there. Come and read for me. What more man of person ought here to be? See computer, chapter 3, from verse, either verse 12 or verse 13. Or verse, verse 13. As you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming, mm -hmm. that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, mm -hmm. and the elements will melt in the heat. Mm -hmm. But in keeping with his promise, mm -hmm. we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, mm -hmm. the home of righteousness. Mm -hmm. So then, mm -hmm. dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, mm -hmm. make every effort to be found spotless, mm -hmm. blameless, and... Make every effort to be found how? Spotless. Make every photo be found out. Spotless, no sin, no doubt. Uh -huh. Blameless mm -hmm. and at peace with him. And at peace with him. What verse? That is verse 13. Verse 14. Let me see verse 14 and another version. King James verse 14. And then NLT verse 14. Fast. Wherefore, behold, seeing that ye look for such thing, mm -hmm. be, diligent, be diligent that ye may be found of him. Him in peace, without spot and blameless. Without spot and blameless. Uh -huh. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, mm -hmm. make every effort to be found living peaceful lives mm -hmm. that are pure and blameless in His sight. That are what? Pure. Lives that are what? Pure, and, pure blameless. and blameless. And this take me to point number six. Number six things needed to qualify for rapture. As a Christian, I'm talking about as a Christian. You are saved by grace. What do I need after salvation by grace to qualify for rapture? Amen. Number six, you need to live a blameless life. Number six, blameless life. Things that, number six thing you need is blameless life. Blameless life. And what does that mean? Amen. Now, what are you talking about blamelessness? I told you... When you talk about purity, I'm talking about purity has to do with what? With your what? With your personal life, your secret life. That is purity has to do with it. But apart from your secret and, and personal life, there is also what? Your, your life in public also must what? Must be in conformity to what? To the life, to the life of Jesus. And that is what we about blamelessness. Blameless has to do with your what? Your life what? In public. What do people say about you? Very important. Now, the first thing is about what? What do what do God? What is God seeing about your life? And then number two, what do people say about you? The pastor was supposed to be appointed, amen, as a leader of a group, and they, and they said no, that man has no what? He has no financial integrity. Money is that man's problem. Money, money. You cannot. If you give him money, you eat it. We give money, he'll do what? He will squander it without accountability. He's very crooked when it comes to issue of money management. You see, you cannot put him in place in the leadership position. Eh? Because that is what? What do they call it? What do they call that? That is called what? He's, he was. He's not blameless. That man is not what? He may not be living in fornication and adultery. He may not be living, he may be living a pure life. Secretly, he may be living a correct life. Amen. But look at him now. He's what? Is he blameless? He's not blameless. So there is what? There is what? There is an issue. The issue is that what? He's not what? He's not blameless. What does that mean? To be blameless means to have integrity. It means to be what? To be sincere. So you need to be, you need what? Sincerity and integrity to what? To make the rapture. Sincerity and what? Integrity. What do you need to make the rapture? Sincere. Apart from being pure, you need to what? To be, that man is not sincere. So he cannot make the rapture. He can't make the rapture. He's not a sincere man. So you need what? You need sincerity and what? And what do I call it again? An integrity to make the rapture. In Acts chapter 6, when they were administering to the widows in the church, they saw that there was a disparity between the Greeks and what? And the Jewish widows. And they now, it was reported to the, to the chief, you know, among the brethren, that is the apostles. And they said, let us what? Let us look for men of what? Of honest reports. Men of what? Let's go there. Honest, those who are sincere. What is the report about your life? 
What is what? The report about your word, about your life. How honest are you? How sincere are you? What is the level of your integrity? Some Christians don't have integrity before believers. That is not correct. You can't make the rapture. You must have integrity. They had looked for every way possible to work in order to nail Daniel. They couldn't find fault. There was no fault because the man was blameless. He was what? He was blameless. They couldn't find fault in that for Daniel. They say we know where to catch him. Is a place of what? Issue of prayer. Now, how many Christians in, in this crooked world, perverse world, are living a blameless life? We are not different from them. We are as crooked as they are in our dealings. In our businesses, we do well. We are crooked like them. They know that we are not different from them. In our ministries, past, you know, the, the, the way they disdain pastors these days. Which pastor? I better go away with your pastor. They are all the same thing. No difference. No integrity. We are not honest in our dealings. And that's why the Christians today cannot be trusted for any good thing again. Somebody told me, say, I cannot have any dealing with the pastor when it comes to money. I can't hold. I will never trust any pastor when it comes to money. I will not trust pastors. No integrity. They are not honest. Amen. They are not sincere. Praise the Lord. Insincerity is too much. And this bunch of insincere people are gathering in church. You think they can make the rapture? No way. If you're going to make the rapture, we must be sincere people. We must be men of honest reports. We must be like Daniel in Babylon in this crooked world. How are we living in this world? You are working in the office. Are you different from others, other people? When they are taking bribe in office, are you not taking bribe? When somebody comes to you to do something that you are paid to do, that is why you're on that seat. You still want bribe. So how honest are you? You are not, you are not different from unbelievers. You cannot go to any rapture or any heaven. You can't go to heaven or any rapture. Insincerity everywhere. Job was a man that lived in the east. After Job was what? He was a blameless Abi. He was a bless. Job was what? Blameless man. That means as a, he was a man of integrity. You cannot hold Job and say, Job, he cheated me. Mm. You, mm, you lied to me. You, you deceived me to buy goods. Can't believe us today. They will buy Ch Ch uh, Chinese product and, and, and call it and call it uh, 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 American American spare. They call it a German produce. Insincerity. You want to import drug, you go to China and go and tell the company to manufacture fake drug for you and bring it so that people can die. Are you, are you, are, is, are, 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 are you blameless? You are not blameless. The hands of many pastors and church members and Christians are full of blood of men they have killed because of their, work, their lack of integrity and, work, and sincerity. You know that this thing is not good. You know that this drug has expired. This, you know that this thing is not good. You will sell to people so that they can go and eat and die. That is why our nation is where it is. No sincerity. The church of our nation, of Africa, of many nations, our church has not produced what? Has not produced men of integrity. And that is to tell us that we are not laboring for, for rapture. We are not we are not all, we are not producing wise virgins. We are laboring for the fire to destroy. First Corinthians 13. Because what we are doing shall pass through fire. And, and by fire they shall be saved by fire. And many shall not stand, they shall be burnt by fire, and the loss shall be suffered. Look at the church now, everywhere, full of church. They are every all over here now. Look at one church is here, beside us here. Is it is, is the same church? Another, another of the commission is there. Within this area, only one church, one group of church, they have they have how many? About five or six or seven churches. And people flock there every day. Amen. Amen. Yet, evil is increasing our society. Godlessness is on the rise. Immorality is on the rise. Everything is on the rise. Every bad thing is on the rise. Because the pastors have not known the truth. And they are, and, or they have neglected it. Or they don't know it. Or they have been bewitched. And the members also bewitched. Hallelujah. Amen. You can see Acts. No, you don't even need to read more scripture. Go and look at Job. Job chapter 1. Let's look at Job chapter Job was a blameless man. You can look at Job chapter 1. You can look at um, uh, first, um, uh, Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 to verse 6. You see there about Stephen and the rest of them, the seven men. 
the, the qualification for their for their election is what is 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 integrity. Ordinary now look at it now. To to administer what ordinary to share food. Discipline is very well. To share food, they have to look for what? They have to look for men of integrity. Now tell me, to make rapture, will Jesus uh, accept anything? I'm asking, will he accept anything? No way. Remember Ephesians 5 27 says it's coming for which church? A church without what? Without spot and without what? Without wrinkle, that they may what? Blameless. That is, they, they should have integrity. A church with integrity. It's not coming for only a holy church. It's coming for what? A church with what? With integrity. It's not coming for only a pure church, but a church with what? He said that they may what? He said that, where we read, let's go back to our text. What is it? He said to be what? To be pure and blameless. That is where we read now. Our text. As, the day of Christ return. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Let's go there again. Verse 10. To live which kind of life? Pure and blameless life. On the day of Christ. You must continue to live a pure life, a blameless life. Amen. We gather bunches of priests who are not pure. They want to bring back God's act. Look at what happened. The tragedy we saw now. Why was why, why were they destroyed? And the ark collected. Because they were not living pure and blameless life. That was what happened, their problem. The problem of the Avenue House of what? But that they were not living what? Pure and blamed. So they were they, they were tragically destroyed in the place of battle. Why was Uzzah killed? The priests who were, who were elected to go and bring the ark. They were not living pure and blameless life. And God made the bridge. Or kissed the bridge to kill Uzzah. In anger, in protest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. It's non negotiable. Integrity is non negotiable. Amen. It's coming for what? A glorious church. A church without what? Without spot. A church that is blameless. You can read Job chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 5 27, 1 Samuel chapter 12. You can see how, how Samuel lived a life of you know blamelessness. Samuel was. An example of a priest who was blameless. He may say, look at me very well. Acts chapter 6 tells us about the, 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 the what made them, what informed the choice of Stephen, Philip, and the rest of them. They were blameless men. They were pure men. And they were also blameless. Practically, they were what? Men of integrity. Number seven point. Let's go to number seven point. Number seven. Amen. Which is the last one. Amen. Let's, let's read that please. Our text. Amen. Let's look at uh, Philippians 1 verse, verse 10 now. Verse 10 tells us about the last number seven thing you need to qualify for rapture, which is the fruit of righteousness. Number seven is the fruit of righteousness. If you're not living a righteous life, forget it. You can't make the rapture. Amen. You must bear the fruit of righteousness. Let's go there. Are we there? Come and read for me now. I will tell you, Philippians 1 verse 10. May you always be filled with the fruits of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God. Be filled with all the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character. Let me see from another version, King James or NIV. Fast read that there, please. Be filled with the fruit of your righteousness. Being filled with what? The fruit of righteousness. So if you must make the rapture, you must what? You must be filled with what? The fruit of, the righteousness. Fruit of righteousness. You can go and see that. You must be what? Filled with what? The, that what does that mean? You must live a righteous life. Hallelujah. Let's see scriptures about that. Matthew chapter, chapter 3. We are not going to read that one. 3, 7 to 10. John says, To those who repented and came for his baptism, who are coming for his baptism, he said, don't think that uh, you brood a viper. He said, no, I want you to flee from the road to come. Amen. He now urged them that they should what? They should bring, let's go there, let's read it. Bring the fruit that meets repentance. 
for the axe is laid at the bottom of a tree. Every that refuses to bear fruit shall be hewn down. Amen. It's not about getting saved. They were coming to John. John told them that what we are coming to do here is not all, all of it. Too. After what is happening here now, after salvation by grace, you must bring what? What must you bring? There must be fruit of this thing. There must be fruit of righteousness. If not that, you shall be cut down and thrown into the lake, into, into hellfire. That is what John warned them from verse 7 to verse 10 of, of, of Matthew chapter 3. Don't just think that uh, you have Abraham to your father. Uh, this is, uh, you come to John and to baptize you. And you go back living this, your life anyhow. You are wasting your time. When you go from here, John warned them. Go back and bring what? Bring the fruit of righteousness. You think the only John that preached that thing? No, it was not only John. Let's see for that in the scriptures. Amen. Let's see Jude 1, 12. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 8, James chapter 3, James chapter 3 verse 8, Hebrews 12, 11, and then a Colossians chapter 1 verse 10, and Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11, and 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10. Let's start from the first one. We're not reading Matthew again. I've already put it. Let's look at Jude 1, 12, or 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 8. Anyone you see, come and read for me. It's it. Mm -hmm. for if these things be in you mm -hmm. and abound and abound, mm -hmm. they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. They make you that you shall neither be what? unfruitful. You need to what? You must not be on what? Unfruitful. That is, you must be a fruit. If you if you're unfruitful up to you, you shall be hewn down, you shall be cut down. Oh, yeah? The next scripture. Want to. Okay. These men are blemishes at your love. Now, who are these men he's talking about here? You must start from verse 1 to understand these men. They are men who are what? Turn the grace of God into what? Into lasciviousness. Said, the sin and doom of godless men. They are living godless life. Yet they preach the gospel. Yet they are in church. Paul said they slipped in unnoticed. They are turning the grace of God into, into, into lasciviousness. Paul said, contend for this faith. Fight, say, again, fight these men. Check them out of the church of God. Drive them. There are people that should be driven out of the church of God. Yeah. That is what Paul says. He content for the faith. What deliver to you? See, these men are sleeping. Say their damnation have been written long ago. Yeah? Verse 12, now says, now says what? These men are blemishes at your love feast. They are blemishes at your love feast. Eating with you without the slightest qualm. Mm -hmm. Shepherds who feed only, on, only themselves. Mm -hmm. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind. Autumn trees Only verse 12. Yes. Autumn trees without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. Let me see from King James. From King James. Did I say James? Jude From King James. Come and read for me now from King James. Ah. Is there Madame before God? Yeah, these are spots in your feasts. They are what? Sports in what? In your feasts. Of charity. Mm -hmm. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, mm -hmm. carried about of winds, trees whose fruit wither it mm -hmm. without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. They are blemish. That is, they are impure. They are what? They are impure men. Amen. That is Jude 1 12. James 3 8. James 3 8. Okay. But no one can. No, I say 18. James 3 18. Okay, 18. And those who are peacemakers who plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Let me see my other version. James 3 8. Let me see. James 3 18. Peacemakers also in peace raise the harvest of righteousness. They raise the harvest of what? Righteousness. Of righteousness. Yes. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Mm. The fruit of what? Righteousness. The fruit of what? The fruit of righteousness is sown. So you must be a fruit of what? Of righteousness. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Uh -huh. Colossians 1.10 And we pray this in order that you may live a life mm -hmm. worthy of the Lord mm -hmm. and may please Him in every way, mm -hmm. bearing fruits in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. King James Version. Colossians 1.10 1, King James Version. Colossians 1.10 Then Ephesians 5 verse 11 110. 110, King James. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord mm -hmm. unto all pleasing yes. being, fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Being fruitful in how many work? Every good work. So when you are saved by grace, I want to make that what must you do? You must be fruitful in what? In good works. You must do what? You're, you must be fruitful in every work. That is, you must be somebody who does what is good. It's a fruit of righteousness. Doing good. Amen. Amen. Helping those who are in need. Are you hearing that? Amen. Feeding the widows. Ministering to the, to, 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 to the ministers of the gospel. Peter, uh, Peter was saying that. He said that widow must have, have record that he has what? He has ministered to the saints. He has, he has, he has, he has, he has helped the poor. Hallelujah. So it must be full of how many kind of work? Every good work. Ephesians 5, 11, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 10. Ephesians 5, 11, having mm -hmm. nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. There is what is called a word. The when you want, if you want to make the rapture, you must have what? Nothing, nothing to do with what? The fruitless deed of darkness. But you must what? You must be filled with what? With the fruit of righteousness. You must have nothing to do with what? The fruitless work of darkness. Nothing to do with it. But for you, what happened? You are what? You are fruitful in what? In good works. You are, you, are, you are rich in good works. You are not doing evil things. You are helping the needy. You are what? Ministering to the needy. You are what? You are visiting those who are what? Who are in hospital. Amen. We are feeding the hungry. These are good works. These are, these are fruit of righteousness. Are you understand what I'm saying, ma? Yes. The fruit of righteousness are what? Are good works. <clears throat> Amen. So if you are not bearing the fruit of righteousness, you cannot what? Make the rapture. And we are seeing what is what? You are not partaking on what? On the unfruitful work of darkness. There are unfruitful work of darkness. You are not living a righteous life. You are living a life of righteousness. You are doing good works. It's part of the works of righteousness. The fruit of righteousness. Good work is involved. It's not just about living, not living in sin alone. It's about also what? It's about also what? doing good works. You are not righteous until you are doing good work. And that is why uh, Isaiah chapter 58 will tell you that what? You say you are fasting and you are wasting your time because you are fasting in vain. You are fasting yet you are not feeding the hungry. You are fasting yet you are not helping the needy. What kind of fasting is that? And that is, that is why the son of righteousness is not breaking forth from you. So fruit of righteousness is, is, not, is not about what? Only about living, in, about, about, about not living, about living, holy, uh, living godly life. But it's also about what? It's about what? About helping, doing good to other people. It's part of righteousness. Your good deed is part of your what? Your righteousness. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 31, Abby. Feed the hungry. Clothe the naked, Abby. Yes. Build the house. Shelter the, the homeless. Visit the sick. These are part of what? The fruit of righteousness that you are expected to bear. You must make the rapture. So those who are living selfish life, they can't make the rapture. Who live only for themselves? They can't make rapture. They are Christian, they only live for themselves. Everything they have, they eat alone. Chop alone, die alone, go to hell alone. What do I call it? Chop alone, what? Die alone, die alone. Die alone. Go, to go to hell alone. <laughs> what do I call it? Let me hear you say again. Chop, Chop alone, die alone, die alone go, go to hell alone, alone, and roast in hell alone. Fourteen so. Chop alone, die, die alone, alone, go to hell alone, alone, and roast in hell alone. Because nobody helps in hell. You'll be roasting alone. Everybody on his own in hell. Everybody's screaming under torments. Nobody to help his neighbor. You know, you know, in Luke chapter 16, is it Luke 16? The story of the rich man. You know, the rich man learned that by experience. 
He was suffering alone in hell. I needed help. Did anybody help him in hell? They don't help him in hell. You suffer alone because you, you, you chop alone now. Abi. The rich man was chopped alone. He what happened to him? He was die alone. And what happened to him? He was go to hell alone and what? And roast in hell alone, tormented in hell alone. And Jesus warned us in Matthew chapter twenty-five, verse thirty-one, that we should help the needy, we should minister to them. That is part of your fruit of righteousness. And that is what the church is not teaching or doing. We are only carrying our money and giving to rich pastors so that we can tap on their blessings. What of the pastors who are, who are suffering? The missionaries in the field who are suffering? But look, we are here. We know how we are, how we are managing. But some people not bring tight and offering to us. They are ministry to us. They take it to bigger ministry. <laughs> Amen. And some will not even do anything. They are chopping alone. Collect their salary, chopping alone. Collect everything, all the money, chop alone. They are, they, are, they are looking for the latest car to buy, latest house to build, latest clothes to wear, latest gold to wear. Why people are suffering? They don't care. This kind of suffering in this nation. Some people, some people don't even care at all. They are doing well. They don't care for anybody. It's all about them and them alone. They will do all. They will die alone, go to hell alone, and roast in hell alone. Except they repent. Because they are not bearing the fruit of righteousness. They can't make the rapture or go to heaven when they die. Because those who are going to make the rapture, where they die, where do they go to? They go to heaven and waiting for rapture. But those who are not going to make the rapture, where they die, where do they go to? They go to hell and waiting for what? Waiting for the final judgment. You know, they will not resurrect until the final judgment. Revelation chapter 20 from verse, from verse uh, uh, 12 down. And from there, from the lake, from, from hellfire to white throne judgment. White throne judgment to where? To lake of fire that we what? We suffer and we bristle, which is the final death. Hallelujah. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians 9, 10. Supply seed to the sower and bread for food. Mm -hmm. We also supply and increase your store of seed mm -hmm. and we enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Mm. Enlarge the word. The harvest of your now, righteousness. Now hold on. Read the verse before there. You know, in this place, he was talking about what? Let's read for so understand the contents of here. He was talking about what? About helping people. Read from verse 1 and let's see. There's no need for me to write to you mm -hmm. about this service to the saints. Mm -hmm. For I know you service to what? There must be service to what? To the saints. Helping the needy. Service to the saint. Service to what? To the saint. Uh -huh. For I know your eagerness to help. Mm -hmm. And I've been boasting about it. Today. How eager are you to help as a, as, as a Christian? You want to make a rapture? How eager are you to help the needy? Uh -huh. Telling them that since last year, you in a car were ready to give. And your enthusiasm has steered most of them to action. They were ready to what? To give to the needy. To the poor. But I'm sending the brothers mm -hmm. in order that your boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, mm -hmm. but that it may be ready as I said you will be. Mm -hmm. For if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to say anything about you, would be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you had promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly gift. Grudgingly given. Mm -hmm. But the generous what? We must be ready as what? Generous. A generous, but not at a grudging giver. Generosity. Generosity is part of what? It's part of the fruit of righteousness. Giving generously. Uh -huh. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Mm -hmm. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Mm -hmm. Every man should give what he has, mm -hmm. what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, mm -hmm. so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you are abound in every good work, as it is written. He has scattered abroad his You are abound. Which verse is that? Verse 8. So you are abound in what? Every good, good work. Works. Which is part of what we say is part of your fruit of righteousness. Good work is part of the fruit of righteousness. Uh -huh. Let me see. Let me see the. Uh -huh. verse, verse 9. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gift to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Mm -hmm. Now he. Hey, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Hold on. He has done what? He has scattered abroad, abroad what? His gift to the poor. His gift to the poor. His what gift. happens to him? His righteousness, his righteousness do what? What happened? What is that? So scattering to the poor is righteousness. Are you hearing about? It's part of being righteous. You are right. You are not righteous if you are not scattering to. The, if you are not giving to the needy and the poor, you are not a righteous person. And you cannot make the rapture. Uh -huh. 
Let me see verse 10 for another version. You have read verse 10 in your version. Verse 10 from your own wonder. And King James, fast before we close now. We are closing now. Verse 10. For That's... God is the one who provides seed for the farmer mm -hmm. and then bread to eat. In the mm -hmm. same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Let me see your own uh, uh, King James. Lastly, King James. Uh, you should be following now. You're not following when you are reading. Corinthians 9 mm -hmm. Now he that mistreated seed to the sower, to the sower, both ministers bread for, for your food mm -hmm. and money and multiply your seed soul and increase the fruit of your righteousness. What does he increase? It is about what? The fruit of righteousness is being increased. When you are ministering to people, what happened to you? Your fruit of righteousness is what? It's increasing. To your account, it's about it to your account. What are you doing? You are laying treasure where? In heaven. Hebrews 12, 10. No, let's leave that place. We'll stop here now. Matthew chapter 19, the rich man that came to Jesus, he said what? He said, all these things I've done for my... He said, but if you want to be made perfect and to have eternal life, what do you do? Go and sell all what you have. So like I have treasure in heaven. Sell it, give to the poor so that you can have treasure in heaven. You cannot go to heaven if you don't have treasure in heaven. If you are not a righteous man, you don't have treasure in heaven, you are not a righteous man. I want to bring treasure in heaven. It is about what? What you are doing. People that you are helping. The needy, the poor, you are helping. Amen. Amen. One of our sisters said she was going to pay her house rent. She said God told her she paid pay her house rent. And she's ready. She said she's going to pay this one. And I know she's paying house rent for many people. She's helping many people, widows. Of, she's helping a lot. And I know she understands the scripture very well. That is, that is a woman that what? That understands scriptures. It's not about going to church alone. What have you learned from church? Do you know that when you are giving to the poor, your fruit of righteousness is increasing? And the crown are going to receive you. What is it called? The crown of what? Second uh, 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 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. The crown that we're going to receive is called the crown of, the crown of righteousness. So if you don't bear the fruit of righteousness, you cannot receive the crown of righteousness. Your service to God, you all that are doing for God, your preaching, your teaching, you know, your evangelism, they are what? Your, your giving to the needy, they are all part of what? The fruit of what? Of righteousness you are bearing. You are not a Christian if you are not, you are, you, are, you are not going to make rapture. If you are just born again or you are saved by grace, you are not preaching the gospel, you are not, you are not doing anything useful to God, you are not helping the, the, the needy, you are just on your own, you are just going to church, just enjoying yourself, you don't care for anybody, no soul winning, no, no support for mission work, no support for IDPs. We have been in the disciple center now. Some people don't even care for it. Combat at the rain, you don't even care. So suppression, you don't even care. People are hungry, you don't even care. Amen. You go nowhere. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me stop here this morning. I believe God has spoken to us from the tablet of his word this morning. As I close, listen to this, please. The day of Christ is the rapture of the church. We must be prepared. We must be ready like the five wise virgin. And these seven things we have said are the things that you need to consistently be doing. Soak yourself in them. Keep doing them. Amen. Amen. And I tell you the truth, you will not be unfruitful. On that day, you shall receive what? The crown of righteousness. Which, which shall give it? Jesus shall give it. It's for only those who are what? Who have fought a good fight. Amen? Amen. Who have what? Who have what? Who have run a good, the good race. They have run a good race. They have finished. They, have, they fought a good fight. They have won the fight against, against selfishness. One battle against sin, iniquity, against unrighteousness. They have won that battle. They've won the battle against uh, 
you know, life of life of lack of integrity. They have won that battle of not being of 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 of, of unfaithfulness. They have won that battle. They are living faithful lives, sincere life. They are living holy, holy and pure lives. They are living life of righteousness, bearing fruit of righteousness. Amen. Amen. If they are the only ones that word that will be given the word, because they have fought a good fight, they have won, they've run the race, they won, and they have finished their course, and they have kept the faith. They never back. They never back. They kept the faith. It's only them that will be given what the crown of righteousness. Let's read that place as we close this morning. Second Timothy chapter four verse eight. Paul telling us there, first reader there so that we can close. I think that should be that scripture. Amen. First reader there, come and read for me. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. 4, verse 8. 8, uh -huh. And now, mm -hmm. the prize awaits me, mm -hmm. the crown of righteousness, mm -hmm. which the Lord... What crown is called? The it's crown, called the crown of righteousness. The crown of righteousness. Which the Lord, mm -hmm. the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. Mm -hmm. And the prize is not just for me, it's not for me but either. for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. May the Lord give you that prize in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's begin to pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let's be on our feet and begin to pray. Lord, I will fight this good fight of faith. I will finish, Lord. I will, I will, I will win, Lord. I will run the race. I will finish my course. I will keep the faith and I will receive my kind of righteousness. Please, Lord, help me. Let's begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Kabalo shandal kabalo Imbradu zibre gedege legedi. Ala dabara balush. Shaba katu kabare dabalish. The Lord bless you richly this morning. I remain your brother Moses or George Chedemigo Special, the coordinator of Rapture Preparation and Discipleship Ministry and also the National Restoration Program. God bless you. I'm sure, I, I'm very sure that this message has blessed your life. Please don't be selfish about it. It has blessed you. Make sure. You share it to others. You also subscribe to this channel. And then you have a question, drop your question. But please, ultimately, please let the message go viral. And you shall receive a rich reward in Jesus' name. And don't forget also to support this ministry so that we can continue to go further. A lot of things are needed. As, as our Disciple Center project is still ongoing, support this ministry. And your crown of righteousness shall not be missing in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Shalom, Maranatha. Maranatha Ozana, Amen.